So let's go ahead and get into it. All righty. So our first topic is how to navigate relationship challenge or challenges. Um, and it says discuss ways to maintain a strong relationship and handle communication issues, disagreements, and conflicts that arise. So how do you deal pretty much with relationship challenges, would you say, with moi? I run away from them. I hide in the room until the noises stop. <laughs> <laughs> the beating stops. The beating stops. Um, no, no, I normally go to the to the room, put as much clothes as I, I can, and then uh, take the beating like a man. Nice. Yeah. That's why you needed layers? Yeah, that's why I need the layers as cushions. <laughs> Um, no, I'll probably say, um, I think we do a good job at it. I think we we're really good at communication. I think we're really good at, uh, problem solving as well. Our own personal problems. Um, when it comes down to relationships, I feel like a lot of people lack in these areas. I feel like in a weird way we excel and it's also because when we got married, we were at, already at a different i guess you could say stage in our lives normally a lot of people get married pretty young as far as like some of our friends some of the people that are pretty much we are, are the groups of people that would we would look up to got married very young mm -hmm. our parents being examples they got pretty much married i want to say maybe five six seven years maybe even up to 10 years younger than when, when we got married mm -hmm. and um I'd probably say that uh, they kind of had to, like, figure it out as they went versus us. It was more of a... Definitely not 10. Sorry. I have to correct that because then there would be, like, 18. Or not 18. We got married at 24, 25. My mom was, like... She was eight... not 15. Oh, no. Because you said 10 years. And I was doing the math and I was like, no. No? That would have been way too young. Ten no, years. like, about... Oh, yeah, like... that's true. I don't know why I was Four thinking. Four or five yeah. years. <laughs> My math is all over the place. Okay, don't don't believe me. Actually, believe me. <laughs> um, no, yeah, yeah. So then it would be <laughs> like five years younger yeah, than four us. Four or five years. Four or five years, uh, not ten years. Um, but still, that's a lot of time to reflect and really grow as a person, especially if you're getting married at that age and starting a family shortly after. Right. Yeah, so it's it's definitely like everything's getting thrown on your plate, mm -hmm. and it's like you have to figure out a way to pace yourself, but you're going to have to eat all this stuff. I think, yes, I do think that we are, are better at communication now, but I do think that there are a lot of things that we've, we've grown in mm -hmm. because I do think that one of the key strengths when we first got married was the fact that we were friends as it is you know you were my best friend and so that helped with the communication because it was already easy or relatively easier for me to communicate with you about how I felt but right. I think it was also a bonus that I tend to wear my heart on my sleeve and so it was hard for me to conceal all the time how I felt because you could tell within my face or you could tell within my behaviors that I was hurt or upset but I would actually say that one of the things that helped us or helped me at least is that I started to ask for what I wanted help in or what I wanted out of the relationship or anything in general. Because I think that at the beginning, I had a very like childish mindset of like, he's just going to know. Like, I think that that's what everyone, though, I, that's why I think I felt like I was understanding on that side, because I feel like a lot of I, I don't think it's just you. I think it's everyone has this idea of marriage is this amazing moment in your life mm -hmm. and it's going to be amazing every step of the way where it's like marriage is amazing, but there's hardships that make that make you grow mm -hmm. that some people don't even think about that. Like they just think like, I'm going to become a better person after this. It's like, you are, you definitely are, but you're going to have to go through some troubles right. before you even get to that spot. So I think that is what people don't really think about. And even myself, I wasn't surprised with it. Well, I think it's because like one, 
I don't think a lot of people marry for the right reasons. I think that's a first. Um, I think we talked about this personally a couple of weeks ago about how just how is it that, you know, some couples end up, you know, divorcing after five years, after 10 years. And a lot of the times if you kind of trace back to why they got in a relationship, oftentimes it's out of, you know, convenience maybe or they're trying to get away from home or um, they were just attracted to the person and that was the primary reason why they wanted to be with that person. But there really wasn't any foundation in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was one of the things that we had. And I think that's been our strength. Because even though, yes, we've had like difficulties in, in communicating at times, there's always that like foundation of like, I know I married this person because it wasn't for money. It wasn't for looks. It wasn't for this. It was because I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this person. I trust this person, you know. But as far as, like, how we, like, deal with challenges, I think I think it's still something that we're still working on. Like, I think we're better now, mm -hmm. but I definitely think that we've... The, one of the things that has helped us is, like, you used to do this with me. Because, again, guys, I, you guys might not already realize, but Joel is the peacemaker. <laughs> He's definitely, like... I put out the fires, okay? He puts out the fires, you know, I he's stopped the very fight. like it's very rare that he's upset. Unless it's like, I don't know, like I'm hungry she ate or my something, food. you know. <laughs> but like for the most part, he's very like I'm okay. I, I'm not going to bring stresses from work home, you know, that's always been your philosophy. Whereas for me, unfortunately, I'm kind of short fuse and I have not the best patience at times. And so I remember like the first like month of our marriage, you know, I'd be like washing dishes, like very cliche, but like, I'd be like, dude, like, I want you to help me. And then I'd be like, he'll, he'll, he'll come down on its own. And he's a lot, he's, he's rational. He's literal. He's like communicated. And so I just be like, if I just click this plate just loud enough it's going to click. And, and it wasn't always like that. And then he'd come and give me a hug or a kiss or something very sweet, very caring, very loving. And I'd be like, get away. <laughs> and it's because I've been boiling with like anger of like, I need help. Now, almost three years down the line, it's easy for me now. Now it's like, okay, I'm not going to take that mindset of, oh, if he doesn't do it automatically, he doesn't love me. It's, if I ask him and he does it, that just shows how much he loves me. And so now I'm just like, hey, babe, I'm tired. You know, can you help me with the dishes? And what that applies to, like, so many different oh, things. Oh, yeah, it could know? be one of hundreds of things. Taking Stella a shower, um, washing some clothes, taking the stuff from the dryer to the washer, and, and vice versa, the washer to the dryer. Right. And, um, yeah, just cleaning. I mean, most of the time, believe it or not, on, like, Saturdays, we kind of just split off she'll she'll tell me like okay you got downstairs i got upstairs and that means everything downstairs i gotta clean it so if it's the dishes if it's the living room if it's stella's area where she sleeps if it's pretty much making sure she's got enough food and water if it's just pretty much picking up all the trash and taking it out it's like that's that that is encompassed but she's also up here not just lounging around she's doing her part as well Right. Yeah. And I think with that, I think another way that we've handled conflict is by understanding that just because I don't I may not do something doesn't mean I don't do anything or you don't do this one thing doesn't mean you don't do anything. And specifically, like if I only focus on what you don't do, then I'm going to be unhappy. But right. if I really pay attention to what he does, then that's where appreciation comes in. That's where like that value comes in and as a very basic example i never take out the trash i i think i've taken out the trash maybe once or twice in the last three years like it's rare that i'm going to take out the trash and he's not resentful that i don't take out the trash just 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 as much as for example for me i mean it's not that you haven't done it but i'm primarily the one to clean like our restrooms like because i have a method of how i 
want to clean it. That's another like pet yeah, peeve of mine. Like s- same thing with the groceries. I let you in the fridge. She doesn't I, let me in the fridge at all. When it comes down to groceries, I'm over here like I can help you, but she's like, nope. Just no. Like just go go, go organize the trash bag or not the trash bags, but like the bags. Take out the trash. Take out so, the trash. Yeah. Uh, get get all the extra stuff that she's gonna be like. So we like remove the egg carton, put it in the trash, and like we put the eggs inside the egg tray and all that extra stuff like bags and whatnot. It's like you're disposing of that. I'm organizing. I'm, so. Yeah, I do a deep clean on the refrigerator, and so I think that we know like, okay, this is a role that I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it. And it also. We've now grown in trust that, okay, my partner is going to communicate with me the day that this is something that they either don't want to do or maybe they are just too tired to do today. For example, if there came a day where Joel's like, I don't want to take out the trash. I'm too tired. Do you mind taking it out? My response isn't, oh, but you're the only you're the one that takes out the trash. That's your job. No, it's like, okay, yeah, of course, like I'll I'll go ahead and I'll help. But primarily, I think the hunch is we help each other and we we con- like we complement each other in yeah. a sense you know so so where I, I would be lacking she would pick up that and where she would be lacking i would be picking up that i have a question how because i always know the answer but how would you recommend to someone who's either in a relationship like new or they're thinking about a relationship how would you diffuse uh, conflict with uh, a young lady who is very emotional and very, you know, like, and when I mean emotional, like she's a crier and she might, you know, burst into tears. Um, <laughs> that was a big sigh. <laughs> I would probably say <sighs> patience, patience. Um, no, it's definitely going to be diving into something that a lot of guys don't have Mm. and it's empathy Mm. and that is definitely hard because most of the time guys think like just straightforward like oh this is broken like i can fix it or we'll just get a new one versus the girls be like this is sentimental i've had this for x amount of time even if we get a new one it doesn't matter because my memories are with this so you have to be more I guess in touch with your sensitive side and try to be like, okay, I, I recognize what's going on. I am going to comfort them, tell them that it's going to be okay. Maybe suggest to get a new one Mm -hmm. or bring another point of view, which is their point of view, which would be, look, it was awesome that you had that for that, that long. It broke, but now you can start new memories with this one. Right. That's how you. So basically what you're saying is like try to understand them to the best of your ability. Yeah. And be patient through, be patient the, through, through the, the emotions, through the chaos. Um, I think, you know, um, if you haven't figured it out, um, even though I think I'm much better now as far as like my maturity and my emotions, um, I do think at the beginning, again, very hard on my sleeve and just you know feel all of the emotions didn't always communicate in the moment what i wanted or needed and i think that even though yes he was very patient and he was very attentive you are very patient and very attentive um you also had lines which i think is why i've changed you know because for you it was like okay you know the first time I'm going to I'm going to carry you. I'm going to I'm going to cater to your emotions. I'll be patient the second time. OK, yeah, you know, yeah, I'll be there for you. You know, third time you can handle this on your own. You're fine. And I, you also did that, you know, and and I think that that's what's also helped me as far. And maybe not every girl is that way, but I think it it developed me to be a little bit tougher and like. You don't have to cry about everything. You don't have to feel every emotion, you know? Right, right. And I think that, like, tough love mindset was also, like, helpful in de- 